It's been eight months since Canada's first confirmed case, and since then, there have been almost 150,000 infections. Dave Seglins is part of a CBC News team that's been studying data for every one of them. He's in Toronto this morning with more on the findings. That is an extraordinary amount of research and data examination, Dave. Uh, tell us what you found and what has really stood out in those numbers. Well, Heather, it's not just the, the mass numbers. We wanted to look at this through the age, differences between men and women, uh, various symptoms, who's winding up in hospital, who is most likely to have a fatal case. A key trend that we've identified is the growth among young people. We've been hearing so much about increased numbers of people in their 20s testing positive for the coronavirus. We have figured out that people in their 20s now outnumber all other age groups, including the elderly. I want you to watch something. See how these cases have surged. Early on, beginning in the spring, it was the elderly who were testing positive the most. But by early summer, cases in the 20 to 29 age group began to rise dramatically. And by mid-August, boom, 20-somethings outnumbered all other age groups testing positive for the virus. Now, another piece of the puzzle for younger people, school-agers, uh, people under 19, Heather, in the last month, there have been nearly 5,000 cases just in the last four weeks. They are becoming a larger share of Canada's overall case count. And as of last night, uh, the daily epidemiological reports from uh, Public Health Agency of Canada show that 0 to 19 now make up 10% of all cases in Canada. It's a pretty extraordinary figure, Dave, and presents all of these challenges in terms of messaging to that particular demographic. In terms of outcomes, what is the data showing about how COVID-19 affects different people? Well, we found a number of things. Um, how people under 50 are more likely to report runny nose, sore throat, those kinds of symptoms. We also see that among people who wind up in hospital or die, they commonly report shortness of breath, fever, and weakness. So we learn a little bit more about the kinds of symptoms. But overall, while cases are growing rapidly among young people, it remains the older people who have worse outcomes. Take a look at this. Over 50, you are more likely to wind up in hospital or ICU, more fatalities. You're also going to have longer recovery times. And one final thought, Heather, uh, women and men. More women have tested positive for the virus. More women have died especially in the 80 plus group where women outnumber men, they have a longer life expectancy, but more men are actually winding up in hospital and ICU overall. And in part, doctors believe that's because men generally have other and are predominance of other health conditions, including things like heart disease, which factors into this whole picture. Dave, thank you so much. Dave Seglins is in Toronto after that Herculean task of examining all of that data. If you want to read more about what Dave and the other members of that special CBC News investigative team have found, head online. You'll find a full comprehensive analysis of all of those numbers there at cbcnews.ca.